everyone. Welcome to this practice. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Katie and today we're doing yoga for dragon boat racers. So if you are a dragon boat racer, you probably feel some tension within your shoulders, your upper back and your core muscles. So we'll work on stretching and twisting out those areas in order to give you the mobility that you need to paddle more effectively. We'll also work on building some strength within those areas so that you can get the most out of each paddle stroke. For this practice, you might need a strap. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt or something that resembles a strap. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. I do have other videos on the channel that you might enjoy. And let me know if you like this by leaving a thumbs up. You're welcome to leave any questions or comments in the comment section below. So go ahead and get ready, and then we'll meet back here on the mat. We'll begin today with some poses that will help you to build strength in your shoulders, your upper back and your core. So all of the areas that you use to paddle. We'll begin with downward facing dog. So you can spread your fingers nice and wide apart. Have your hands in front of you. Curl your toes onto the mat and then start to drag your hips up and back, pointing your tailbone towards the ceiling. And then start to release your head towards the mat. So your ears come in line with your biceps. Your feet can be about hip distance apart and you can keep as much of a bend in your knees as you need to here. So just to get everything warmed up, you might start just by paddling your feet, stretching through the back of your legs. And just noticing how your body is feeling today. And just take a moment to find your breath wherever it is in your body. And with time, you can start to encourage nice long and deep breaths all the way into your belly. And when you're ready, you can bring a little bit of stillness back into your feet aligning them to be hip distance apart, dropping your head again to your mat, trying to get your ears as much in line with your biceps as you can. Point your tailbone up towards the ceiling and start to notice that stretch in your upper back. Sending your breath into whatever tightness you might be feeling. And each time you exhale, just getting rid of that tightness. Remember, you can always keep a bend in your knees here. We'll just take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, we'll make our way into a high plank. So gliding forward until your shoulders are directly above your wrists. Feet are still hip distance apart. Keep your elbows nice and soft and try to pull your belly button gently in towards your spine. So building that core strength here, keep your head as much in line with your spine as you can. We'll take one more deep breath in. And then as you exhale, you can bring a bend into your knees. Start to drag your hips up and back again, coming into downward facing dog. Dropping our head, pointing our tailbone up, feeling that shoulder stretch. Breathing in and now exhale. We're making our way back into our high plank. Pausing here just for a moment and then exhaling. Bend your knees, drag your hips up and back. Find your downward facing dog. Now we'll just do a few more like that. So moving to your own breath, breathing in, gliding forward into your high plank, exhaling, reversing back into downward facing dog. 
inhale coming forward, exhale to come back. And of course here just building up some of that core and shoulder and upper back strength. We'll just do one more high plank. Exhale for downward dog. And when you're there, you can pause for a moment. Take a nice deep breath in and out. And when you're ready, you can drop both knees back down onto the mat and we'll sit back into child's pose. So you can bring your big toes together. Either have your knees together or they can be far apart. Hands can reach towards the front of your mat and then release your forehead down to the ground. And if your forehead doesn't connect to the mat, that's okay. You can just make a little platform with your hands and rest your forehead on your hands instead. Finding your breath again here, connecting to those deep belly breaths in and out. Now you can use your next breath in to lift you up, coming just to sit on the mat for a moment. So we're gonna come into dolphin pose now. Again, a really good pose for your shoulders, your upper back and your core. So to start, we'll come into tabletop pose, making sure that the knees are directly below the hips. Then you can bring your elbows down onto the mat having them directly under your shoulders and forearms are parallel to each other. Curl your toes onto the mat now. And just like in downward facing dog, we'll start to drag our hips up and back towards the ceiling behind you. Feet are still hip distance apart. Keep your tailbone up and try to drop your head so keep pressing down into your forearms. You can keep as much of a bend in your knees as you need to here. And we'll just take a few deep breaths. So really starting to feel your shoulders and your upper back working here. Remember that building strength here is going to make you much more effective in your paddling when you're in your dragon boat. So hopefully that can be some motivation just to stay here for as long as you can. We won't stay for too long. Now we'll take one more deep breath in and as you exhale you can bring both knees back down onto the mat. Well done, we'll take child's pose here just to recover. Resting forehead onto your hands or onto your mat here. Big toes are together. Knees are either together or wide apart. So really Releasing your shoulders here, letting them drip down towards your mat. Finding your breath and encouraging nice deep belly breathing. You can bring your hands out in front of you if they're not already there. Press your finger pads into the mat and use a breath in to pull yourself back up into tabletop pose. So shoulders are directly above your wrists, knees directly under your hips. So we're just gonna do one more strengthening pose here, this time for the core. So within our tabletop, we're gonna lift our knees up off the mat. So we really start to feel those abdominal muscles engaged. And again, we won't stay here for too long but just try your best to hold the pose. If you need to bring your knees back down to the mat for a moment, that's fine. Keep your elbows with a little bit of softness in them and we'll just breathe here.
take one more breath in. And this time as you exhale, knees can come back down onto the mat. And then we'll bring our hips to sit in the center of the mat. So all of the hard stuff is over now. We'll move on to the nice stretchy stuff now. So you can come down to lie on your back. Taking a moment just to reset and recover once you're there. And we'll make our way into fish pose now. So you can bring your feet together and have your toes pointing up towards the ceiling. Having your palms facing down, bring your hands in underneath your hips. On an inhalation, lift your head to look at your feet and then lift your upper body up so you're resting on your elbows. You can walk your elbows as close to each other as you can get them. Once they can't go any closer, take a deep breath in to open up through your chest, glide back slightly, and then bring the crown of your head towards the mat. So it's okay if your head doesn't connect to the mat here. You can always take a cushion or a yoga block if you have them and put them in underneath. But we won't stay here for too long. Our goal is to stretch through those abdominal muscles. So take really deep breaths into your belly and let your breath rise up into your chest as well to open up through your shoulders. We'll take one more deep Deep breath in, opening everything up. And then as you exhale, you can gently lift your head again, looking back towards your feet. And then one hand at a time, just remove them from and underneath your hips. And come on back down to lie on your back. So just noticing the effects of the pose, giving everything a chance just to reset here. Now when you're ready, you can make your way back up into a seat on the mat. So we'll sit here for a few minutes, so make sure you're nice and comfortable. You can always use a cushion or a yoga block to sit on, which will make it more comfortable. And you can grab your strap here. So we're going to do cow face arms. And this is a really good pose, again, to open up your shoulders and your upper back. So you can unroll your strap and just place it over one of your shoulders. Then we'll reach the right hand out in front of us, pushing it as far away from you as you can. Then we're taking it all the way back behind us. Once it won't go any further, turn your thumb down, bend at your elbow and find your strap behind your back. Left hand reaches up bending at the elbow again and finding another part of the strap. So you can choose how intense you want this stretch to be. If you're craving a little bit more, you can walk your hands closer together along your strap. We want to pay attention to this top elbow and try to keep it pointing straight up towards the ceiling. Try to keep the back of your neck as long and as straight as you can. Once you feel comfortable, you might just close your eyes or relax your gaze. We'll hold this pose for about a minute. So try your best to focus on those deep belly breaths. Breathing all the way into your belly, letting it rise up into your chest and maybe it even flows up into your throat. And each time you exhale, emptying your belly and your chest and your throat.
And as we take our last few breaths here, just a reminder to check in on that top elbow again. Make sure it's still pointing up. Make sure the back of your neck is still nice and long. One more big belly breath in. Once you've completely exhaled, you can start to come back, opening your eyes again, releasing your grip from the strap. Take your hands back out in front and maybe just circle off your shoulders. We'll repeat that on the other side now. So this time your left hand comes out in front, press it away, then take it all the way back. Turn your thumb down, bend your elbow, find your strap. Right hand reaches up, bending the elbow, find your strap, and then walk your hands as close or as far away from each other as feels best for you. Point that top elbow up and lengthen through the back of your neck. Once you're comfortable, you can close your eyes or just soften your gaze. Feeling that tightness within your shoulders, but just knowing that we're releasing it from the body now. Focus on those deep belly breaths. We'll stay here for about a minute in total. Remember to point your top elbow up and focusing on the last few breaths here. Now we'll take one more big breath in. Once you've completely exhaled, you can start to come back, removing your grip from the strap, circling off your shoulders. And then we'll remove the strap for now. We'll make our way into nose to knee pose. So you can sit, sit with your legs out long in front of you. And then we'll bend the right knee, bringing the sole of the right foot into the left thigh. So again here you can sit up on a block or a cushion to make this pose a little bit easier and if you feel any discomfort in this right knee you can have cushions or blocks in underneath for support. So we'll rotate our torso to look over this left leg. On a breath in you can reach your fingertips up towards the ceiling and as you exhale hinge at your hips just bringing your hands down to wherever they land on this left leg. We want to try to keep our spine as straight as we can here. So just use each breath in to lengthen your spine and then each breath out might help you to sink your nose a little bit closer to your knee. Again here maybe closing your eyes, just relaxing into the pose, allowing your breath and gravity just to do the work here. The goal here is mostly to stretch those muscles all along your spine. Muscles that can become tight when you're paddling in your dragon boat. So we're going to release that tension and also create a little bit of flexibility so you can paddle more efficiently in the future. Now you can use your next breath in just to lift yourself back up. We'll keep our legs as they are and move into revolved nose to knee pose. So your left hand can just come to wherever it does on your left leg. It might make it to the toes, 
If not, just grab your shin or wherever is comfortable. Then the right hand reaches back behind us. We'll make a really big rainbow shape and then try to reach that right hand towards your foot. Now, it doesn't have to connect at all. We're just creating that stretch along the side of the body just to release any tension there. So you can start to rotate your chest up towards the ceiling and look up at your right hand. And again here, each breath in might lift you slightly out of the pose, but each time you exhale, you might be able to sink your hand a little bit closer to that foot. And just keep this left foot flexing. We'll only stay here for a few breaths. So try to make them as deep and as long as you can. Now, whenever you're ready, we'll start to lift ourselves back out of the pose. This time you can take that right foot back out long, maybe shake off your legs, and then we'll repeat on the opposite side. So this time your left foot is coming into your right thigh. Again, cushions underneath this knee if needed. We're inhaling to lengthen, exhaling, hinging at the hips, dropping those hands down wherever they land, keeping your spine as straight as possible, and encouraging your nose down towards your knee. Each inhalation, lengthening your spine, lifting you slightly out of the pose. And each exhalation, allowing you to sink a little bit deeper when your lungs are empty. Now you can use your next breath in to lift yourself back up and then we'll take it to our revolved nose to knee now. So this time your right hand is just coming down to grab wherever it does. Bring your left hand back behind you and make your rainbow shape across. Right foot is flexing, chest points up towards the ceiling and you can gaze up at your left hand. breathing into whatever tightness you're feeling and then exhaling to get it out of your body. Next breath in can take you out of the pose, lifting back up bringing both feet out in front again, shaking off your legs. We'll make our way into reverse tabletop now. So you're bringing the soles of your feet onto the mat. Palms can come back behind you with your fingers pointing towards your body. Feet are hip distance apart. And when you're ready, you're lifting your hips up towards the ceiling, maybe gently dropping your head back. We'll just stay here for a few seconds, so keep your hips nice and high. 
We're stretching through the shoulders again and just opening up the front of the body after folding in on it for so long. Lift your hips a little bit higher than you think they can go. And then when you're ready, you can take them back down onto the mat. We'll have our legs out long in front of us again. And from here, we'll come into a half spinal twist. So we're bringing the sole of the right foot to the outside of the left knee. Left leg can stay long here, or if you're feeling flexible in your hips, you might bend that left knee to bring the left foot to the outside of your right hip. If you're here with both knees bent, check that you can feel your sit bones against the mat. Now you can take your right hand in behind your tailbone as close to it as you can get it and use your right arm like a pillar to prop up your spine. Left hand reaches up towards the ceiling. Take a breath in to lengthen through your spine. And as you exhale, rotate towards the right to hook your elbow to your top knee and then start to look back over your back shoulder. Each time you inhale, you're making your spine a little bit taller. And as you exhale, Think twisting from your waist, then your rib cage, and then your neck to look back behind you. Take one more breath in, lengthening up your spine. This time as you exhale, you can make your way back to center, undoing your legs, give them a little shake off if they need, and then we'll take that to the other side. So your left foot comes to the outside of your right knee, right leg can stay long or you can bend it. We're bringing the left hand in behind the tailbone, propping up the spine, and then right hand reaches up. Breathe in to grow a little bit taller. Exhaling, rotate to the left. Hook your elbow against your knee and then twist from your waist, rib cage and neck to look behind you. One more breath in here and exhaling, we'll make our way back to center, undoing the legs, giving them a little shake off. So you can come back down to lie on your back now. And we'll end this practice with another twisting pose. So you can bring your knees up in towards your chest and then have your arms out wide left to right with your palms facing down. Now you can start to peel your tailbone up off the mat. Take a breath in and as you exhale, drop both knees over to the right side of the mat. We want to try to keep both of our shoulders grounded here, so keep them both connected to the mat. We're just creating this gentle twist within our torso releasing the lower back as well. And this is really important for dragon boat racing. You're doing so much twisting as you paddle. We want to make sure that the body is as open as it can be to allow for more effective paddling. Try your best to keep your feet stacked on top of each other and you can always take a blanket in between your legs here to make it a little bit more comfortable. For more of a twist you can look over towards your left hand and if your body is inviting you to go a little bit further 
you can always take your right hand, place it on that top knee, and just use the weight of the hand to open up your body a little bit more. We'll hold the pose now for a few deep breaths. So just breathing into whatever tightness you're feeling, exhaling to carry it out of your body. When you're ready to come out of the pose now, you can slowly pick both of your knees back up. Take a moment just to reset. You can send your legs back out long again if you need to. Noticing the difference within the two sides of your body. And when you're ready, we'll repeat that on the other side. So knees come back up towards the chest. Peel your tailbone off the mat and then drop both knees over to the left. Checking that both shoulders are still grounded. Trying your best to stack your feet on top of each other. You can gaze towards the ceiling or look over at your right hand this time. And again, if you're craving a little bit more, you can take your left hand up onto your top leg and we'll find our breath again, relaxing into the twist on this side. Whenever you're ready, we'll make our way out of the pose, slowly lifting your knees back up. And then you can send both of your feet down towards the bottom of your mat. And just find whatever way is most comfortable for you to rest. You might come into Shavasana pose, having your feet and your arms wide away from your body, palms facing up. Allow all of your muscles to drop down towards the mat. Loosen up your jawbone. Relax all of your facial muscles. So you can stay here for as long as you can, just letting your body soak in all of the benefits of the poses that we've done. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. I wish you lots of success and happiness in your dragon boat racing. But until next time, thank you and namaste.